You ever had an incredible steak dinner and then put it in a sandwich and then had it for this price? That is but cheaper. When you go out on the town, oh, I'm gonna go get a steak sandwich, and on average, you're paying this. And at a steakhouse, you're paying this. What the f The reason why this sandwich is this instead is because we have technique. We look at all the arrays of meats. Wow, that's a lot of meat up there. And we choose not only the cheapest, but the most idealistic cut that we can make as beautifully as possible with technique and care. With all that being said, let's make this, shall we? A steak sandwich like this is quite simple in terms of the list of elements within its tight buns. Or, well, toast in this case. You got the bread, the boeuf, of course, and all the toppings, including a wee cheese sauce. First, bread. I don't care if it's a butt cheaper, a butt better, or one of them god dang tweeters. Making your own bread is the greatest way for the ultimate eating experience for any sort of a sandwich or dining experience, doesn't matter. And guess what, brother? It's almost always the most economical at the same time. It's almost like it was made for a butt cheaper. Right, large bowl. Add in 750 grams of all-purpose flour, 17 grams of fine sea salt, 45 grams of whole wheat flour. Mix all that together until thoroughly combined. Separately, I got 562 grams of filtered water, around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh, Josh, so many grams. What about cups? Well, don't you worry, we have conversions. If you go to the link at the bottom of the description. To that, whisk in four grams of instant yeast. Don't try and get fancy and add more yeast, okay? Just this amount. Once dissolved, pour your yeast juice into your flour mixture and mix by hand until you get a relatively shaggy dough. Roast your dough for 10 minutes, then give it a nice slap and fold, or you can knead it in the bowl like this by picking it up and slapping it against the bowl, sort of in a scooping motion, until it begins to turn relatively smooth. Cover with plastic wrap and rest for 15 minutes, then grab a small piece of the dough near the edge of the bowl, stretch it as much as you can without tearing it, and fold over the dough. Repeat all the way around the perimeter of the dough until you reach your original starting point, cover it again, and rest for 15 more minutes. Repeat that stretch and fold process, including the wait time, two more times. Then cover it up one more time, rise at room temp for one and a half hours, and then pop it in the fridge overnight. The next day, you're gonna take it out and do not punch it down this time, right? He gets to live. Using a dough scraper, carefully scrape your dough onto a work surface. It will be very sticky. Okay, so where some practice is gonna come in. Split your dough into two even pieces. Pre-shape each piece into a light ball by carefully scraping underneath your dough with your bench scraper while simultaneously slowly rotating it to generate tension. Leave it to rest uncovered for 15 minutes. Then one piece at a time, dust the top generously with flour. Carefully flip the flour side down onto the board, exposing the sticky. Stretch and fold the left side over to the middle, then the right side over the left, fold. Fold the bottom towards the middle, and then finally stretch the top up and down to the base. Now optionally, you can stitch the sides together over one another to create more tension. Gently roll it from the top to the bottom, so the seam now faces down towards the board. Now, gently drag it an inch or two towards you, quarter turn. Repeat that pull towards you again, quarter turn yet again. Repeat the pull, quarter turn, pull, until you go around the whole god dang dough. And now you have a taut pool. Carefully pick that up and pop it into a bowl that's been lined with a generously floured, cleaned kitchen towel. Or of course, a banneton with the banneton liner, also dusted with flour. Repeat that with your other piece of dough, then cover tightly with plastic wrap and rise at room temp for one to two hours or until puffed and plump. While that's rising, pop a heavy bottom pot or Dutch oven with a lid into the oven and let it heat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever your oven max is for at least one hour. This needs to be something thick and heavy like cast iron. And if you don't have that, well, then borrow one from a family member or go buy bread at the store. And honestly, it probably won't add much price, but it will most likely take away some flavor. Anyway, once your dough is proofed, pull out your piping hot Dutch oven carefully. You know, probably using gloves would be a good idea. Dust your dough with flour and then carefully invert it into the bottom of your Dutch oven, being careful not to scorch the ever-loving out of yourself. Optionally, using a razor blade, score the top of your dough in sort of an X shape, cover with the lid, and place back in the oven for 20 minutes. Then remove the lid, reduce the heat to 450, and bake for another 15 minutes uncovered or until a deep burnished brown. Now remove it, place it on a wire rack to cool the room temp, place your Dutch oven or cast iron back in the oven with its lid to preheat for another 15 minutes, and repeat with your other loaf. All right, for the steak element, look, this is tough because most steaks are going to put you out of the price range. No matter what you do, unless you know the butcher, you can give them a little kiss for a nice discount. That is until I discovered the Beef Chuck Tender Roast. It's the solution to the chewy ass eye round that nobody really wants, and you're gonna need about two and a half pound or one kilo piece. Optionally, you can tie it off at three to four intervals across the whole length of the roast to help it cook evenly. Season that generously with salt and pepper to taste. Now get yourself a medium sized pan, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat to medium high until ripping hot, add your roast, sear for two minutes per side until beautifully crusted and browned deeply, then pop that bad boy into an oven set to 225 for about 45 minutes or until the internal temperature hits around 
132 Fahrenheit. Remove from the oven and rest for 15 minutes before slicing. Now, while that's resting, let's make our toppings. First off, do not disrespect the humble peppers and onions, specifically referred to as peppers and onions. It's an undefeated combo for many things. So get yourself a 12 inch pan with just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom, heat that over medium high until hotter than it was before, more specifically, nearly smoking. Add in one sliced onion, one green bell pepper sliced into half inch wide strips, saute until it starts to develop some color, then season to taste with salt and pepper. Continue to saute until just softened. Next, mushroom. Quite literally one pound or 450 grams of cremini mushrooms sliced. And yet again, 12 inch pan over medium high until searing hot. Add in your mushrooms and sear aggressively, stirring occasionally for four to six minutes or until you get some good color on those mushroom and they're nearly cooked through. Season to taste with salt and pepper, reduce the heat to medium and continue to cook another minute or so until beautifully cooked to your liking. Now, set that stuff to the side. Move on to the sauce. A cheddar-based Mornay sauce. Let's keep this classy. Medium saucepan, add one tablespoon or 14 grams of unsalted butter. Set the medium heat. Once melted, add in one tablespoon or nine grams of all-purpose flour. Cook, stirring often for 30 seconds. Whisk in one cup or 120 milliliters of whole milk. Then continuously heat and stir until it begins to thicken. Cut the heat off and then whisk in one cup or 65 grams of grated cheddar cheese and continue whisking until completely melted and smooth. Mamma mia. Add a touch of salt and pepper to taste and that's a basic but fulfilling cheddar cheese sauce. Look, you can always add other stuff to it if budget allows, all right? But this is much cheaper. Time for assembly. Slice your roasted roast, thick or thin, but ideally enough to get all the servings here, which is gonna be about six to eight servings. I will note that there's a line of sinew that runs through the middle of the roast here. So I cut the roast in half against that to remove the sinew and then slice the beef against the grain. Next, slice your beautifully crusty artisanal loaf of bread into half inch thick slices, toast each slice on one side in a pan with butter or inner toaster, even a broiler if you got it, until toasted to your desired level. You want a nice sort of golden brown crunchy depth on that side, but still, Now, starting with the untoasted sides, add a light spread of mayonnaise on both slices. And if you don't like it, then be sure to go, ew, yucky, in the comments. Follow with a generous spoonful of your cooked mushrooms, layer on some of your sliced beef, a nice stack of your peppers and onions, and lastly, a light drizzle of your cheddar sauce. Top with the other slice of bread, toasted side facing up, of course. And this just looks beautiful. That's a steak sandwich I'd pay 15 freaking dollars for. And by golly, I might even pay more. But you're only gonna have to pay this per serving. Now, we know this has to be good, but what about that beef, huh? Does it live up to my standard? Let's find out. We can channel our inner Julia Child. No. <laughs> steak. Steak sandwich. Wow, look at that. Immediately when I put this together, my first thought is, I'd pay $15 for that. Hell, I'd pay 20 for that. <laughs> Oh yeah. I want you to close your eyes. Take a seat, sing at a nice dinner table. Candlelight, you're waiting for your loved one. They're on the way. Or if you're single, sorry. You smell the meats emanating in the air. Plate comes down, it's a beautiful steak. Juicy. Wait a minute, it's a sandwich. Oh, there's peppers and onions and cheese and all sorts of wild things. And it's this sandwich. You wouldn't have been able to tell the damn difference. And for this price right here, you'll never have a sandwich this gourmet for that. But you know what you will have? B-roll.